How's it going, YouTube? Right, we're back on the camper again. I've got a mattress in it because I've been taking a few measurements for a few bits because I need a bit of wood up here and a few other bits like that. Well, as you can see with the mattress in, this back end's starting to look like a proper camper now. I just need these top cupboards in and then, to be honest, that's this back end finished off. But I'm going to take that mattress out again soon. I'm actually right in the middle of building the kitchen units, but I'm going to have to drop what I'm doing uh, because we've got something else that's happening that's quite exciting. Uh, well, it's exciting for me because I like gadgets and electrical stuff things like that. But I've had a phone call to say all the electrical stuff's in stock and it's ready to be picked up. Uh, so I think today we need to be doing that, don't we? But as you can see in the back, I've been running off this old Powers S2000 uh, power pack for a while, uh, just temporary power while I've been waiting for everything to come that's going to be in here properly. Right, so let's get comfy in the camper a minute and let's talk about what we're going to do. Right, so the electrics in this camper. Uh, it's a bit of a big thing, isn't it, the electrics, so we need to get this right. I started off my working life years ago as an apprentice British coal electrician. It was a HV electrician. And ever since then, I've always been in engineering and things like that. So electrical things and things like that are kind of a bit of a passion of mine. So I do actually like all that sort of stuff. And I like to make sure it's right. After my time at British Coal, I found myself as being the electrician for a company that made uh, horse boxes. Uh, this particular company made some of the best in Europe. There was really high spec, like the super yacht sort of things. And I found during that time I had quite a bit of exposure to some of the really high spec electrical equipment, uh, like Mastervolt and Victron Energy and things like that. I probably installed about 200 at least uh, distribution systems. And because of that, that's kind of steered me towards a decision to want Victron Energy stuff. Uh, so what I've decided to do is I've decided to get a full Victron set up in this. Because if you're going to do something, you might as well do it right. Uh, there's a few stipulations that I want with this camper. Uh, one of the things is I want it to be off-grid as possible. That's what we're going for with this. Uh, and that is why we're going for quite a lot of solar on the roof, as much as I could fit. Uh, I want to make this as off-grid as possible. And that involves a completely gas-free system. I don't want any gas on this vehicle. I want it all to be electric, where possible. Now, the heating will be diesel. And part of that, I want to disprove a few misconceptions about what you can and can't have in a camper van. Uh, the main one of which is people always buy kettles and cookers and things like that that are always low powered because they think that it needs to be because it's a vehicle. The easiest way of saying it is if you take half a liter of water and you want to boil that half a liter of water, uh, when you're measuring energy used, a lot of people think it of kilowatts and things like that, uh, but the actual energy used to boil water is measured in joules or kilojoules or whatever. Uh, and that is a combination of the energy used as in the kilowatts and the time. Uh, so the amount of joules used to heat the water is the total amount of energy used to take that from whatever temperature it is to boiling temperature. And what you find is whether you're doing it a low power or a high power, the amount of joules is exactly the same to boil that water. So all you find is if you're doing it at a lower power, it takes more time. Or if you do it at a higher power, it takes shorter time. It's still the same amount of energy going out of your battery. And the only advantage you get by going lower power is you can use smaller cables because it's less amps going down those cables. Uh, but if you've got the inverter power there to power a higher powered uh, cooker or kettle or something like that, why would you want to wait longer for your coffee? You can have it quicker and still use the same amount of energy out of your battery. Uh, we're going to have a little bit of a compromise uh, because once you go above about three kilowatt sort of size for inverters, they start becoming massive, as in physically quite big. And um, we've not got loads and loads of room. So what we're going for is as big as possible, but keeping it realistic within size. So to help with the design of that system, uh, there's a company that's actually local to me now uh, that we used to use a long time in the past for the horse boxes and things like that. Uh, they're a Victron uh, supplier for the UK and they specialize in off-grid systems. They started off around yachts and things like that for people like Sunseeker and stuff like that and the horse boxes. And then they've expanded from the recreational side of things into the commercial side as well. So not only are they doing yachts and camper vans and things like that, they're also moved into the commercial off-grid systems that are right out in the sticks and things like that and going into the real bigger stuff. Uh, whatever your off-grid problem is, uh, these are the guys that have got a solution for whatever that is, for whatever application. 
and the company's called Energy Solutions UK. They're based in Rochester in Kent. They offer you a full consultation, so you just literally tell them exactly what you want to have, and then they give you back a specification of what ideally you should have to power whatever you need to have in a way that you need to power it, if that makes sense. And the main reason for me to go into people like these is because when I was fitting all this equipment, it was 20 years ago. Bluetooth didn't even exist then, and a lot of things have changed, and a lot of these systems have changed, and they've become quite clever. Uh, so I'm fairly out of date with all this stuff, so I needed a bit of help. Uh, so what we're going today is we're going to go to Energy Solutions, we're going to go and pick up all this stuff, and we're going to go through exactly what we've got, and then what I'm going to do is this is going to be like a series in a series, if you know what I mean. Uh, this will be part of the camper van series, but I'm also going to do a separate playlist, which will be the electrical installation. And this is going to be the first video within that electrical installation series. And, and what we'll do is everything I've done so far, uh, we'll be going through that as well. What I would like to make clear though is it's not a how-to video, it's an information video. So what you need to do is take everything I say and add it to your research. Uh, don't just use the information I give you and do it exactly, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I'm doing it for this application here. Your application might differ, and unless anybody's completely confident with electrics, uh, you really need to not do it and let the professionals do it. The level of power that we're dealing with, unless you're really unlucky, won't kill you anyway. How you do the electrics could because you can cause fires. If you use the wrong size cable, the wrong size fuses, any connections not quite right, they create resistance. Re resistance creates heat and heat creates fires. And we've got plenty of things to burn in these campers of ours, haven't we? But I hope the information I'm gonna give you across these uh, videos is gonna be useful and helpful. And I'm gonna be kind of finding out a lot of things for myself as well, because like I said, it's all new technology now. So along the way, I'm gonna be learning as much as you are. But we'll go through the full electrical install. So I think what we need to do now is I can't go in this because it's got no MOT. I don't wanna re-MOT it in the middle of summer because when I'm away, if I'm in Spain or something like that, I need a UK MOT, so the best time for me to get an MOT is probably September, October, then it's like before winter and after summer, so it's a bit of a time when I'm more likely to be in the UK. Uh, so I'm leaving this without an MOT for now. Uh, so what we need to do is we need to get in the Volkswagen, hopefully I'll fit the solar panels in it because they are quite big, like I said, and then we'll go and pick up all this stuff and have a look at what we've got. So let's pack this up, let's get in the Volkswagen, Let's go and have a look at some electrical stuff, shall we? Right, I've come in the Volkswagen just to make sure we can get everything in. Uh, but here we are. We're at Energy Solutions in Rochester to pick up the bits. So there's the main offices. Uh, over there, they've got another two units that do all the off-grid commercial stuff. Uh, really, really nice setup. So let's get inside and let's get this stuff, shall we? Right, there's everything loaded up. Uh, we've got the inverter, battery, and all the rest of the stuff. There's the solar panels. You can see how big these are going to be. Look, they're literally as big as the bed in the Volkswagen. And we've got two of them. So let's get this stuff home. Uh, let's get it out, and let's go through exactly what we've got. Right, that's me home. I need to get this stuff out. These solar panels are massive, aren't they? I've got two of these to fit up. I don't know how I'm going to lift them up onto the roof. I just want to say a massive thanks to Energy Solutions UK. Uh, the team there are absolutely fantastic. Uh, really nice people. And that's what normally shows a difference between buying something off of eBay and buying it from somewhere like that because there you get the pre-sales and you get the after-sales, so they'll make sure that you're actually buying the right things that you need. You may save yourself a few quid going to eBay, but in the long run, it's really not worth it, because eBay's not gonna help you out when you're halfway through installing it and you get stuck, whereas the after-sales at Energy Solutions, they'll help you out. And they've also got their own YouTube channel as well that do some instructional videos and some introductions to some of the kit, uh, so check them out here. Uh, like I said, I'll put links to them in the description, uh, and I'm also going to put a full list of everything I've got here with links to it as well, so you'll see this full setup. Right, so let's get this stuff out, and let's go through exactly what we've got. Right, I've got everything out, I've got it all out of the boxes, mainly because I wanted a thumbnail. Uh, so here it is, here's everything we've got. 
Uh, right, it's a bit of a beast of a setup. Uh, so what I need to do is let's go through each bit individually. I'm not going to go in super great detail because obviously as we fit it and set it up, uh, I'll go in a lot more detail about each of the pieces of equipment. Uh, but for now, let's have a quick overview of this whole system and see what we've got. Right, so starting at the back, uh, we've got two solar panels there. These are Victron solar panels. Uh, these panels are two 305 watt uh, panels so we've got 610 watt of solar there and then, and the same as everything else you get what you pay for uh, these are super efficient panels these panels i'll be wiring them in in series uh, i'll talk more about that when we actually go to do it uh, but i want to keep the amps down and you've got less of a chance of volt drop through the whole system uh, so we'll be wiring these in series and because of that we need something that can cope with the higher voltage so what we've got down here is we've got the Victron MPPT uh, charge controller for the solar. Uh, this is 100 stroke 30, which means it takes 100 volts at 30 amps. Powering the whole system, uh, we've got a smart lithium uh, 330 amp hour battery. Uh, these ones are a lithium phosphate, super efficient, a really high cycle amount. Uh, and for a 330 amp hour battery, if I measure it against my hand there, you can see they're actually really small. Uh, this particular model uh, has the wires coming out the end uh, for the BMS, so you can attach one externally. These don't have an internal BMS or battery management system. Uh, the reason being is because these are stackable, so you can wire these in parallel or series. Uh, the ones that have the internal BMS, you can't wire those up in series to get a higher voltage. You have to stick to the voltage of the battery. Whereas these ones, you can design them around the system that you want. Uh, so if you're running a boat on, say, 48 volts, uh, you can wire all these up in series, uh, wire the control cables into an external B BMS, and then it'll be perfectly happy looking at the 48 volts. This particular install, obviously, is 12 volts. Uh, but what we've got to go with this is I've gone for the Lynx distribution system. Uh, this starts off uh, with the Lynx Smart BMS. Uh, what this will do is these will connect into it and then this can monitor the battery. Uh, we'll talk more about this when we go to install it, but when you open it up, it's got a contactor inside. So if there's any anomalies, anything going on that shouldn't be going on, uh, this can open up the contactor and stop any power going in or out the battery. And it'll monitor the temperatures, the voltages and everything else on the battery. Uh, we'll talk more about all these, obviously, as we're installing them. Uh, joining onto that is the Lynx distributor. Uh, this is basically, very basically, uh, a really posh way of doing buzz bars. Uh, you've got the power coming in from here, then you've got various outputs, all through fused outputs through here. Uh, these will monitor those fuses, and this will obviously talk to this, and then this will talk to the rest of the system. So if there's any problems with any fuses or anything on the system, it'll pop up with a little light here, and it can even notify me on my phone and things like that. Uh, so these are a really tidy way of having buzz bars on your system. I've got a couple of isolators here so I can manually isolate the system. Uh, talking of contactors in case of any issues, uh, what we've got here is this smart battery protect. Uh, this one's a 65 amps and what this will do is this will connect to the DC circuits which is over here on these fused outputs there. So if there's any problems with the battery getting low or any other issues, uh, this will be joined back to the computer and then it can cut the power to these systems as well to stop it completely draining the battery or anything else. And also I can remotely open that if I want. So if I want to cut all the power off to everything while I'm away from the vehicle or start the power, I can with this. Which what it means is it take all the power away from all of the systems, but all the charging and everything can all stay in contact. On the subject of charging, again, obviously we've got the MPPT, which we spoke about. Uh, we've also got a DC to DC charger, the Orion XS. This is a new one. You can see the size of it. It's absolutely tiny. And this will be charging from my alternator of the vehicle. And this, the same as everything else, or most of the other things, it's got a VE Direct Connect. Uh, so what that means is this can get one of these cables here, these VE Direct cables, and then I can connect it all back to this, the Serbo GX, which is the brains of the outfit. This is the computer that controls 
all of this equipment here. So all of the equipment that we've got here together, uh, this will all be networked in one way or another back to this computer here. And this is a GX Touch uh, 50, which will be joining into this, uh, which is, will be our main control panel for the whole system. Uh, we can obviously go into this with my phone and over the internet and things like that. So we can remotely control this because uh, we're going to have Wi-Fi in this van as well. So this will look after the entire system. And for my mains charging and my mains power, uh, we've got a multi plus two um, inverter. Uh, this particular one is, you can see there, it's the 12 volt, uh, 3000 watt, 120 amp. So what that means is it's 12 volt system, uh, three kilowatt inverter, and a 120 amp charger. One of the benefits of the Multi Plus 2, uh, which we're going to have a look at, is it's got two sets of 240 volt outputs. These do some really clever things. And whilst we're talking about clever things, uh, this Serbo GX, this does some super clever things as well, because obviously we've got all these inputs and outputs there. Uh, what we can do with that is we can put temperature on it. Uh, we can have tank sensors. So all of the water tank sensors and things like that are going to go onto this. Uh, over here, I've got a Ruby uh, temperature sensor. I need to get a couple more of those actually. And then what all that'll do is they connect to this via Bluetooth uh, so we can monitor temperatures and things like that because we're going to have this set up to do some clever things. For example, if it gets too cold outside, what we can do is I can make this trigger some heating around the tanks to stop the tanks freezing up underneath on the water and things like that. So we're going to do all sorts of clever things with this eventually. Uh, this does have some relay outputs for that sort of thing. Uh, but what we want to do to make this a little bit clever and give us some more outputs is we've got this. Uh, this is a smart switch DC4 uh, by Energy Solutions. Uh, this will connect straight to this using the CAN connections. What this does is gives us an extra four channels of outputs uh, so we can program these to do other things. For example, lights and things like that. So we can trigger them off an extra screen on this uh, control here or from the phone or remotely or anything like that. So we're gonna wire this up to do some clever things as well. That's about the whole system. Right, so there's only about so much detail I want to go into this today, uh, but obviously there's going to be lots of videos coming up, installing all this and setting it all up. Uh, so this is going to be like a series within a series on the camper build, because I'm yet to buy all the cables and things like that. So I need to start cable sizing and getting the right size cables. And then when we come to fit the stuff, uh, what we'll do is we'll talk about why I've picked the size of cables I've picked and things like that. So we'll go through as much detail as I can uh, without making it too confusing. Uh, but also remember that do your own research as well to add to any information I'm telling you. And what I will do is I'll put a link to each one of these items. I'll do a list of everything that's here in the description uh, with links to the Energy Solutions website where you can see each one of these exact components here. So I hope that gives you the introduction into the electrical system that we're having in the camper. I hope you're looking forward to the install as much as I am and getting it all working because I do like these sort of things. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Um, look out for the playlist that's going to be for the electrical install as long as obviously we've got the playlist for the boxer uh, the whole build itself which these videos will also be there uh, like the video if you liked it uh, comment below anything you want to say any questions you've got i do like to read your comments and i'll catch you in the next video cheers